Bang. Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we're going to take a quick look at some amazing knives that are in for service. Now, this is the Shiro Goroff Neon, and it came in uh, for a new edge, and the clip was really loose, and it was dirty and filthy, and just needed a clean up, needed a nice tune up. So I took off all the parts. Now, one thing about these is they have loose bearings. So I soaked all the loose bearings in some alcohol. They're individual, they're very easy to lose. There's a lot of them. And so I, I took them out of the washer because the washer has the bearings um, that will pop right out. So I soaked them in um, some alcohol. And then after, you know, cleaning them all, I put them back in the washer, cleaned the knife up, cleaned all the parts, got the, you know, the clip back on, and I sharpened the, the blade up. I put a mirror edge on it. Now, let me talk about this really quick because I wanted to lay back the angle. I did. These are beautiful knives, too. Um, but I wanted to lay back the angle, but I couldn't. Well, I could. However, I would have to put a choil in this or... Um, hit the plunge grind. If you look, Cheryl Goroff's always do this, where they put the plunge grind right next to the edge. So in order for me to change angles, I have to hit the plunge grind or I'm, I have to put in a choil. So without doing any modifying or anything like that, I just kept the same angle that was already on there, which is a, a pretty high angle. Um, I put a mirror polish edge on it. Maybe I should have put a toothy edge on it. It's super sharp. It's shaving sharp. No problems with that. But it would be a way keener, way sharper with a with a lower angle. With this high of an angle doing a polish, it is a little slick. It's not, you know, it doesn't have the most bite. Don't get me wrong. It's very sharp. Like I said, it'll shave. It'll do all that. But compared to a polished edge that has a low angle, it's pretty slick. But with a toothy edge it's still you know it's not you know with that high of an angle it just is what it is it's more of a tough edge now yes with a lower grit it would definitely have more bite but it wouldn't be as pretty so we made it pretty and this is still very sharp so um i uh like I said, I cleaned it up really nice. It's very smooth. They have a nice small flipper tab, nice strong detent. Past the detent, um, the detent is right there. You can get past the detent. Beautiful centering, as centered as you can get. These have amazing clips on them. They are some of the smaller Shuros. Now, I want to show you a big Shuro, because separate from that, I got another Shuro in for sharpening. Ooh. And whew, would you look at that? Beautiful. Um, I forget which model this is. If it's the, the F9 series, possibly. I'm not, I'm not positive. It is a full titanium version. Beautiful. I can tell it needs some cleaning, though. Is it on? I can't tell, but it feels like it's on washers, not bearings. I'm not positive. And it's weird because I don't see anything on this side over here. Isn't that weird? I don't know if you guys can see that, but I haven't taken it up. Oh, okay. Maybe the parts are in the bag and I don't know it, but... I can see that this is very much off. It looks like it's missing bearings on one side. I'm not going to continue to flip it, but it looks like it's missing something on the inside. We'll figure it out. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it just needs adjusting. Maybe that's all it needs, um, which I'll take care of. Either way, we're going to put a nice edge on this S30V. Beautiful knife. It does have good action, even with the the thing you know off centered and everything um that's kind of crazy now check out this next knife don't know what this is but damn it is it cool <laughs> it's wicked this is insanely thick i gotta figure out i'll put a name up on the screen wow you can tell this is a custom let's see if we can reverse plug it oh man that is a strong detent Ooh, yes. Yeah, I got to give it a little bit of risk because this detent is heavy. You can see how big the flipper tab is. That's the primary way to flip it. 
You can reverse flick it. You just got to give it a little pop. You can see how heavy that detent is when I close it. Ooh. Anyways, nice, or I don't want nice, but extremely thick. This is, cr you can see how big the edge bevel is right there. So I'm going to resharpen this. This, I'm probably going to lay this angle back a little bit farther because this is so robust. It's non, it's not useful. Look at how thick that is. Not useful at all. What are you going to use this for? The only thing I could think of is prying, scraping, and I don't, I can't think of anything else. Maybe stabbing into something, but you, I guess you could open tape with it. See, that's the thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. With really thick grinds like this, there's only they're only good for two things. Two things, that's what they're good for. Very, very light use and very, very hard use. Nothing in between. And what's crazy, what sucks about that is that the majority of things are in the middle that you use. So what is it good for? Cutting tape and prying stuff. <laughs> you know, like a Praetorian. Think about it, um, a Medford Praetorian right? What are those good for, right? Can you cut with them? Absolutely. You can cut with them. You can cut tape and very light duty stuff, cutting cardboard or breaking anything down or straps or ropes or anything like that. You are, you can do it, but you're not going to want to, you're going to want to grab every other knife out of your collection before you grab that. And that's the way this is. It's super thick, but it'll be great for just doing regular light duty EDC stuff opening boxes, opening packages, cutting tape, but you're never going to want to use this for anything other than that. It's just too robust. Um, down here, it's not as thick, but it's still super thick. And right here, it's really thick. So the grind goes from super thick down to uh, thick, <laughs> and then goes from thick to insane thick. <laughs> wow crazy titanium titanium clip see the backspacer um um you can touch the blade all the way down a lot of customs are like that that are this thick because when you make knives this thick you just can't help but be able to go through the backspacer very smooth but i feel it's got some uh some lock or sorry blade rock a little bit of blade rock I might be able to fix that. I don't know if that's, it's, it might not be in for that though. I think it's just in for sharpening. And then the last really quick, we're going to take a look at the smock, but it's not just any smock because this smock is in to get these beautiful, beautiful scales put on it. Look at these scales. Is that not just gorgeous? Look at that. It's almost blinding. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. That's going to look. So Let me just slap it on there real quick so I can show you guys what it's at least going to look like. That is going to be so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, man. Yes. But the smock, fantastic knife. It's something unique from Spyderco because one, the hole is smaller. But the blade shape, it has a nice deep hollow ground sheep's foot style blade. I used to have one of these and I loved it. I don't know why I gave it up, but I did. Um, I shouldn't have. They are really cool. The, the flipper tab's slick, but it's really, there's not an issue with it. Once you get used to it, it works great. But you can't help but want just, if they just put a little tiny bit of jimping, but maybe they did and they found out like that it just wasn't comfortable or something. I don't know. But I I just can't help but want just some sort of texturing right there. Not nothing sharp or anything like that. Just a little bit of grip. This has the fake carbon fiber. I don't know why they would ever put this stuff on these knives. It's ridiculous to me. S30V. Beautiful hollow grind. These things get nice and thin behind the edge. I love that you can get up nice and close to the blade. The handle is quite a bit bigger than the blade itself, but it's a very solid button lock because this button lock is different than most button locks. It's actually better than most button locks. And the reason why is because it's basically a compression lock. 
See that? It's basically a compression lock with a button attached to it. So just picture basically like a Spyderco PM2, except for it has a button attached to it. So that's why it can be so strong and so durable and so solid and not have some of the issues that some button locks can have. The Spidey Flick and Detent is perfection on this. It is three points of contact. You have the stop pin, then the liner, right? And the liner hits the back of the, or hits the tang of the blade and the stop pin. So you have the stop pin, the tang of the blade and the liner all in contact together. And the liner wedges itself in between the two. Which also helps it be, you know, a little bit stronger because the liner is trying to wedge itself in between the stop pin and the tang of the blade. Very cool, though. But there you guys go. I just wanted to show you guys this stuff really quick. I thought it was really interesting and fascinating. I haven't worked on them yet, except for the one I did work on already. But figured I'd show you guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.